Hey guys, that's your command today in Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Hopefully it finds you all doing well today. We're gonna take a look at Hegemon. Hegemon was at least around the time, maybe like within the first year of me playing this game, he was everybody's most wanted champion in the game. I ended up pulling him maybe like a year after he fell out of the meta, at least the arena meta. But that being said, is he still usable today? Is he any good today? If so, where can you use him and how can you use him? Specifically, which builds? I'm going to show you two Hegemon builds today. A lot of you probably can guess which two they're going to be. But first, a few shout outs to you guys. We get uh, Skyke, Psych Doodle uh, looking for a Hegemon guide. We're looking at Joe Kane now looking for some hegemon we have randy molten uh revilo and phoenix the superstar all looking for some hegemon let's go ahead and take a look at this void legendary knights revenant champion Okay, guys, so as I mentioned, he is a Void Legendary, so tough to get this dude. Uh, here he is. He looks pretty cool. Aesthetically, I've always liked Hegemon. Uh, he really fits the word, the definition of Hegemon to me in, the, in terms of his aesthetics, right? Uh, he looks pretty dang uh, badass. He actually looks maybe like a little tankier than he is, at least to me, you know? Uh, anyway, he's a legendary attack based champion, Knight's Revenant, love Knight's Revenant faction. Uh, he's average to maybe slightly below average in speed at 96. His defense is super squishy at 815. His HP is okay at 19K, 1487 on the attack. On his A1 attacks two times at random, each hit has a 35, make it 45, 55% chance when booked of placing the big version of decreased speed for two turns. On, and that's actually not bad because it happens on each hit. Plus, if you pick up Sniper, that brings it up to a 60% chance. So it's not a bad A1 ability uh, against bosses, you know. Uh, that being said, you don't see a lot of Hegemon teams because of the decreased speed, but it is noteworthy. I think a lot of us, myself included, we forget what he even does on his A1 because when you think Hegemon, you think A2 and you think is passive. Uh, so his A2 is Crippling Cold. It's a four turn cooldown. You can book it, but it just goes to extra damage. So I don't think it's imperative that you really have to book this champion. Definitely try him out first and then decide if you want to just put books into damage, okay? Attacks all enemies, places a decrease attack buff for two turns. Also has a 50% chance of placing a block active skills debuff for two turns. So why did he fall out of the meta? Before we get to the passive, which really makes him really good right he fell out of the meta because of you know just like half the the champions that used to be very popular in the meta uh he fell out because of polymorph and because of stone skin right uh polymorph can turn him to a sheep and stone skin can block the block active skills uh his passive fateful arrival always goes first each round Okay, if there are multiple hegemons whoever has the highest speed will go first uh that's what the arena used to be it used to be hegemon control, and there was no stone skin, there was no polymorph, there was no answer. For the people out there who complain about polymorph and stone skin, first of all, I understand the complaint because it's so prevalent, it's so dominant in the meta, and everything goes so slow, especially as you get to like goal five, live arena, uh, or platinum, right? Uh, that being said, I was around, maybe a few of you guys were too, back in the day when every team was speed race, hegemon or tormen and i actually like this a lot better there's a lot more diversity even right now even though it doesn't seem that way anyway i digress because even though like taras and marichka are everywhere there's still a lot of other champions that are everywhere too i'm, I'm getting i'm getting beyond the guide here uh increased crit rate in all battles by 19 percent uh so this dude's best use is obviously going to be the arena. I want to pull up hellhades.com and see what they say about other areas of the game. And as would be expected here, you're looking at a pretty decent scores in Fire Knight. Again, the double hitter with a decreased speed. So not bad there, right? Uh, can help you out control a little bit during the waves too. Uh, Dragon, they give him a four. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, and then outside of that, really no key areas in terms of the new dungeons. Uh, no key areas in terms of Doom Tower floors. Doom Tower floors, you can actually be 
decent as well. Uh, want to make sure his A2 is off cooldown. It is a four turn cooldown. Uh, it's really that go first mechanic, which is why he scores well in Dark Fey as well. Now, it's a shame the Dark Fey rotation just ended, but I guess I can just, you know, intuitively, you know why he's good at Dark Fey because he's going to go first and he's going to go before the other Hegemon, the mirrored version of the Hegemon, and you can block out your own ally's skills, right? Uh, and you can land the decreased speed as well. Uh, so in the arena, a four and a half, right? So that's really what it's all about with this dude. Live arena, bronze one. Uh, he's got an 81% win rate in bronze one, the 61 in bronze two, 62. So like in live arena, in bronze and in silver even, I think anything, honestly, I think anything around 53 and higher win rates are, are, are usable, you know? But when you get to silver four, that's when you're going to run into a lot more polymorph. When you get to gold one, again, more polymorph, more, a lot more stone skin, and uh, you know, and you can work around him too. He has a pick rate of one percent, but he has a win rate in gold three of fifty-seven percent in sixty in uh, in gold four. So hey, very interesting. Again, the pick rate is so small that it's hard to read too much into that. Uh, but let me tell you how he could be a a good live arena uh, pick, even in this meta, simply as the last pick. If you're picking last. And they don't have a good response to deal with the hegemon. He can be a sneaky throw-in, right? If you pick him first in live arena, he's not going to help you at all. They're going to make sure they add a bunch of revivers or stone skin champions or pot, whatever they have. He's going or they're just going to ban him, right? And they might still ban him. You can see the ban rates at thirty-five percent. The only champions with ban rates around thirty-five percent or higher in this game, even granted small sample size, are going to be the Tarasis and the Marichkas. They aren't even that high, uh, but it's going to be the control champions, the uh, the skill cooldowns, the uh, Yumekos, the War. Lords, the Crixias are going to have a high ban rate. Uh, you know, I'm actually surprised by that. I'm, I'm surprised by the gold three and gold four. If it was just one of the two, I'd be like, eh, maybe a little bit too anecdotal. But you can see that people are probably using him as kind of a sneak last play, right? All right, guys, enough talking about this dude. Let me show you how I have him built. Actually, let me show you his multipliers real quick. A 1.7 on a two times hitter on the A1, excuse me, and a 3.7 on the A2. So two ways to use Hegemon, right? I mean, they're kind of one and the same. Like, he's going to provide both use cases, but you can lean more in one direction. And that is a Nukemon or a Controlemon, I guess, right? So this is going to be the Nukemon. So listen, I went a little overboard here just to prove the point, right? He's built to be a nuker. My man's in Savage and he's in Cruel. He's going to be ignoring 30% of enemy defense vis-a-vis -vis the artifacts. And then he has Helm Smasher on top of that. So we're ignoring as much defense as we possibly can. He has an absolute arena build in terms of his, his masteries. By the way, I would go with these masteries Pretty much no matter what on Hegemon, no matter how I'm building him, no matter how I'm using him here. So I would go down Ruthless Ambush, Cycle of Violence. You could go Opportunist, but the thing is, is he's not, he's always going to go first. No one's going to set him up with a stun or anything like that. So I think the Cycle of Violence is definitely the way to go. And then go down to Helm Smasher. And picking up extra, extra accuracy is always going to be a good idea as well. So my man here is an attack percentage on the boots. His attack percentage on the chest, too. He has crit damage on the gauntlets. He has uh, attack on the banner. He has crit damage on the amulet, and he has attack on the ring. So you'll see, guys, we have absolutely punted pretty much every stat here, and we are min-maxing his damage, his attack, and his crit damage. He's super slow, but he's still going to go first, even with 129 on the speed. The thing about Hegemon is unless you're running a reset champion, he's going to go first. You're hopefully going to lock out most of the enemy team or half of them, depending on your RNG, maybe less. You got a 50-50 shot, right? Uh, he's void affinity too, so you don't have to worry about like affinity matchups. Or you're going to kill them. And this is the strategy here. 
we're going to go with the kill shot strategy, right? Now, you can build a team around this sort of a hegemon. He's going to go in. He's going to get his one shot. He's going to go first. He's going to block them or kill them, block their skills or kill them. And then the rest of the team can kind of take over from there. So that's one strategy. I have Soul Reap on him for a blessing there as well. We're going to get even more attack. And if we can get him to four-star awakening, we get crit damage uh, as well, okay? Uh, hegemon number two. Is going to be now i do want to be fair on this build as well i need more accuracy here so i think instead of divine crit rate sorry sorry guys i had a sneezing attack there Oof. uh <laughs> i was saying he doesn't have enough uh, accuracy for my liking 324 not quite enough i'm aiming for like 400 or so for the arena but you know more often than not i think that 324 plus the masteries are actually going to get the job done uh so we have attack percentage and the speed on the boots but look at all this crit rate where they're getting we're going to get uh 12 from the set divine crit rate then we got a trip roll over here of 25 and then we have another 11 on the chest so i had that line around and i built my second hegemon for today's video so what i'm trying to say is i would go perception instead uh if i had kind of the gear lying around and i would go for the extra accuracy because obviously in terms of stat priorities here speed isn't going to be huge on this dude uh but accuracy and damage are going to be huge on him um if you're running him in an area like Dark Fey or Dungeons or Doom Tower, he's still going to go first every round. Uh, I've seen some, I think even one of the comments, uh, who was it here? He put him in Relentless in Cruel. Uh, video showcase of what he can do, all those extra turns seems interesting. Yeah, listen, I, I guess I, how I feel about Relentless is... I think pretty much any champion in the game is going to be good in Relentless Gear, you know? I, I, I really, I mean, maybe with a few exceptions, you know? But Relentless Gear is really, really good. Personally, and I'm only speaking for myself, I save my Relentless Gear for somebody that I'm going to be using in one of my three Hydra teams. I have most of my champions in Hydra and Relentless. Uh, or someone who just really excels in Relentless. With a champion like Hegemon, I feel like you can go triple Perception, Savage, or Lethal, or even triple Cruel before you go Relentless. That's just my opinion. I wouldn't really run him in Relentless, but I can understand why. I think even before Relentless... If I was going to consider an unorthodox approach in the build, I would actually go with Reflex. Because when you think about it, he only has one active ability. So that chance of decreasing the cooldown is always going to go right to the Crippling Cold. And maybe get it to a three turn or who knows, even a two turn if you're incredibly lucky. Uh, cooldown. So anyway, guys, those are my builds. That's how I, uh, you know, so both are kind of built as a nuker, both of these hegemons. Uh, but one's just all out nuke with attack percentage on the on the boots as well. And one has accurate, a little bit more accuracy on the banner as well. So I'm going to run them together. I made this fun little team. Uh, double hegemon, arbiter. We don't really need arbiter because... Well, we're going to go first with both of our hegemons, right? Uh, but you never know if they're going to be able to finish off a tanky team like this. So let's just try, right? Uh, I'm not going to show you any dungeon stuff on hegemon today, guys, because uh, I, I'm just going to be real. Unless I pulled him in the early game or the mid game, like really early on, I probably wouldn't be running this dude that much in... Uh, you know, in, in PvE content, personally. Uh, not to say that he's awful. He can be a good control, again, for Dungeon Waves or for Doom Tower Waves. There's a couple Cursed City floors that he's useful on, too. I actually went in, and I checked every Cursed City floor preparing for today's video. And unfortunately... There's not as many as I was hoping for in terms of hegemon floors, you know, uh, or like Night Revenant, you know. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer. But you can see everybody's locked out and look how much damage that we did to them as well. So this is the power, obviously, of hegemon. Now I just have a nuker on the team. He can come in and clean up, right? This is the A1 ability. And I didn't even look to see what the damage actually was, but this is definitely a tanky team here, right? This is a beautiful strategy against the go first team as well. Let me try it against the go first. I mean, there's no way this team is going to survive. The team that we're facing is going to survive this. I have two go first hegemons. Now, obviously, you can employ the same strategy with one hegemon. I mean, if that was it, right? Now, this is my slow head. This is the nuker going next, right? This is the kind of nuker. This is the dude going right now with the attack percentage. So I expect him to kill everybody here, and he does. Good job. Are, is it the strongest nuke in the game? Certainly not. But is it strong enough? Yeah, it, it is. 
Now, again, I'm not going to give you all double nuclear hegemon because I know having one hegemon is hard enough. Having two, I mean, that's a whole nother story. But here we're going against a, uh, a stone skin champion. And you can already see that things are going a little bit differently here. The Reviver stays alive, unable to kill Sil the Drakes. We're going to go ahead and come in here and try to reduce the, uh, the duration of the, uh, whatchamacallit. Now, the A1... It's, it's at random, so we can't choose who we attack for the decreased speed. We did land it on two of them, which is nice. We're going to go ahead and just boost to our nuker, take another turn, reduce the cooldown, take out the reviver, and then uh, we might still win this one here. I'm just going to put it on auto. And then I'm going to do like one more double hegemon team, maybe two more. I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I kind of like, like run the double hedgy. Uh, brings me back to the olden days, right? Although back in the olden days, I didn't have even one hegemon. Like I said, I kind of pulled them after stone skin. And then I pulled another one like a year after that. Uh, so I didn't get to really enjoy him when he was at his peak, so to speak. But let's go ahead and go after another go first team. And then we'll go after another, uh, another tankier team too, right? A team like this though, even one hegemon, again, what I was saying before, doesn't mean you could have like a Sun Wukong or something in this last spot or whatever. There's there's the problem with hegemon, right? Got turned into a sheep there. It's nice that he has the decrease attack too, I will say. Uh, I have a two turn stone skin on half rack, right? So that's why I'm not using his self buff ability first. He just kind of go in there and just do his regular nuke first. I don't want to speak too soon, but this one's not looking as clean as the others, right? So we're still in it, though. We're still in it. All right, RB down. Come in here and, again, reduce the duration there. Got Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So I put a Hefrak on this team. A, because I love Hefrak, right? Uh, oh, I forgot. The <laughs> here I am doing the match. I didn't even realize they had a Lydia. Uh, I think we'll be okay, though. Let's re-kill her. And then take care of Nishak. Uh, Hegemon squishy and kind of once he, he's kind of like, he's kind of like, what do I, I don't want to call him kamikaze or get, <laughs> I'll get whatchamacallit, uh, uh, demonetized. But he's kind of like, I got a little bit of that in him. Once he's done his, his first ability and he goes first, it's tough to get all the way back to his second ability again. All right. Let's do one more, uh, one more team. I kind of want to face like a, yeah, like a Taurus team, like, you know, some meta champs, right? Uh, this will be the last one that we do here. Uh, but again, I mean, I figured you guys might want to see the two built. Uh, but I'm not noticing. Are you noticing a huge damage difference, guys, between the two of them? I don't know if it justifies taking the boot, putting the boots on. But then again, to my point earlier, it's just kind of like I've always been of the mind of, again, like I just said, hate to keep repeating myself, but like, I don't know. He kind of gets the job done once and he's kind of done. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this kind of kind of effective, kind of fun. I'm going to take out one Hegemon and, and keep... I'll keep the Nukemon in. And I didn't even notice if we blocked anybody's skills on this one. Can we take down Krisk? We can. Can land that decreased speed too? I got to say, all the debuffs are landing. People don't build champions with resistance, do they, guys? Here's a super tanky team. Let's see what we can do. Is that Drockle the Gaunt? You don't see a lot of Drockle the Gaunt in the arena. I like it. I like it. Uh, so let's see. We block two active skills. Beautiful. Speed things up. Come in and nuke them down. Or or not. Or not. Retrodrath and uh, obviously a good affinity matchup here. Oh, man. All right. There we go. There we go. So obviously, as I was saying, guys, you could run a team like this. I'm just going to put on auto as I talk a little bit. You can run a team. He kind of fits on, on, on a go first team. He fits on a go second team, kind of, if you want to try to get in there and be a little sneaky with the block active skills. I think the Hegemon, as I was kind of alluding to earlier, I personally think that he's a lot better in a uh, regular classic arena when they can't plan for you and you can plan for them. Everybody in classic arena, I mean, unless you're just going – Full auto, just trying to max your great haul. You could care less. You know, you lose some, you win some, whatever. That's true. I think that's the type of strategy that I would employ a hegemon team on personally. I want to, I lied to you guys. I want to do one more, but I want to take out the double, right? I don't even, I forgot which one is which here, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know what? Let's just, let's just three man it. Let's just three man it because he gets this job done. We should be able to just have one nuker. We shouldn't need anything else, right? Look at that. 
I mean, I don't know which one he was, <laughs> but he basically took down the entire team before they even had a chance to go, right? So very, very powerful. We have block active skills on the Reviver that allowed us to kill Warlord uh, first. And uh, I have to say, I think that truthfully, even though there's a lot stacked up against him in the meta, I think that I think that a champion like Hegemon is very underrated for great hall farming and for just, you know, I, I think he's still very viable is what I'm trying to say to you guys. Uh, I found this Curse City. I found one area in Curse City. I haven't ran it yet uh, that we can use him. It's Awakened Stage C23. I'm going to try to run him with just a War Maiden, two of them with just a War Maiden. And we'll see if we can uh, just clear this in a few turns. So, again, we're going to go first. Okay. So, two out of three isn't too bad. But, of course, they got a, uh, they got a uh, Sandlash Survivor with a block damage on their team. Well, we're going to get through, but we're not going to be able to do it in a couple of turns like I had, uh, I had hoped for. So, when this falls off... But, I mean, this is not really much of an illustration of use case. However... It is, I, I kind of wanted to do this just to kind of, you know, prove a point, I guess, as, hey, he's also very good in wave content, you know? Like I said, you're going to go first. Some of these Curse City waves, guys, I mean, I don't need to tell you guys, they're very tough. I have a video coming out on my main channel, I think, tomorrow uh, about some of these teams. I'll give you a little sneak peek if you haven't taken a look at every floor in the game. Now, I haven't checked today yet, but some of these floors, there was nobody, and there was only one person in the world. Now there's three. Three people in the whole world have cleared this stage. It starts out against it with Tauruses and Marichkas. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> but anyway, I have a whole video on that coming out tomorrow, guys. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is there's a lot of challenging areas in Doom Tower waves. If you're, you know, depending on where you are in your game, where you are in your account, uh, that Hegemon could definitely help you out on as a as just a general control anywhere there's champions, any wave content in the game. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Uh, keep the champion guide request coming in the comments below. And as always, take care, guys.